Hello everybody! We're back with another unique facade. Continuing the series of painting different facades for you. In this case, what we have here is also a country house, or perhaps a house somewhere on the outskirts. There is a wooden door, a window, and we also have some old advertising posters that are already somewhat weathered. After we have painted the facade, we'll glue the posters on. And we'll do the final weathering with the posters already in place. When priming and whenever we're doing it with the airbrush, we should have the appropriate thinner on hand. Since in this case I'm going to apply this acrylic grey primer, the appropriate thinner is the one for acrylics. And the cleaner for the tools. The brushes as well as the airbrush. I have the airbrush prepared. At about 1, 1.5 bar pressure. The priming layer is very important. That's what we always say when we are doing demonstrations. The final result depends on this layer. For painting, we're going to use these three colors plus white and black. With white and black, we create variations and contrast, depth, and with these three, we'll try to achieve a whole range of combinations to paint the different elements of the facade. To finish, we'll start weathering with the enamel that we've been using during this series of facades. And we may add some extra materials as well. So now, we just need to pay attention to all the details of the facade, to see how we paint each of them, okay? Let's start creating the mixtures and then we can get to painting. We place the colors on the palette and we can start mixing. We'll keep them on the palette at all times. We deposit the colors and this way we always have the mixtures ready or we can make new ones. So now I'm going to make a series of mixtures with different greys because we're going to start painting this area of the facade. We're going to use the sponge for painting, alright? First we'll apply a very thin layer with a lot of water and then we'll start working with a sponge. You can see that I'm applying different grey tones on the entire facade. I'm also going to paint this area, because we'll later work on that area with the liquid for creating chipping effects. All the greys we have applied to the facade have dried. And now we're going to create some different tones with the light yellow ochre color. We've used yellow, red and white. With that color, we're going to vary the tone of the greys by applying it very diluted. The next step is applying with a sponge this grainy white that you can see here to add texture. We have to use this color directly from the bottle. Even if we put it on the paper and it's slightly damp, we have to use it without adding any water. Let's dry the sponge a bit on a piece of a paper towel that you should have on hand. We're going to continue and what I'm going to do now is to do a bit of dry brushing. 
with a flat brush and this tone that we've achieved with a bit of red, yellow, white and some grey. As you know, dry brushing consists of rubbing over the surface to highlight the edge or the more protruding area. We have to use the paint directly from the bottle. Alright, take a look at the appearance we're obtaining. What it lacks right now is depth. The reason why it doesn't have depth is because we've only worked on the flat surfaces of the facade. What we're going to do now is to use a dark color, a dark grey or black that's left on the palette, and a lot of water, and work on the lower areas of the bricks, and highlight the joints. This will precisely give us depth and extra relief. You have to be very careful, because acrylics, as I've mentioned before, leave marks and stains. So now we're going to work on the lower part of the bricks, on the joints. We apply the acrylic paint and without waiting for it to dry, we blend it with the brush, so that we obtain a shadow on the bottom part of the brick. Our next step, before applying the next product, is to cover the facade with a masking tape. We're going to tape off the areas where we won't apply the following effect. And we're also going to cover up the door with the tape because we don't want it to be covered with other paint tones. Once we have applied the masking tape over the facade, I'm going to show you how the liquid mask works. You have to shake it a bit, open it up and make sure to use a brush that you don't care too much about because you'll probably have to toss it. It's just like paint. You apply it over the area you want to and then spread it around. Once the liquid mask has dried, I've used another kind of tape to protect the bottom part. And now I'm going to apply the chipping fluid. When it comes to chipping fluids, if you've already seen any of the other videos, you already know that what they do is to create a film between this layer of paint and the one we'll apply on top of this fluid. Since they are acrylic, once we apply the liquid, followed by another layer of paint, when we moisten that second layer of paint with water, the chipping fluid will chip off and reveal the first layer of paint. They create really cool effects of chipped paint. So let's take a look. As I said, they are acrylic liquids, meaning they are soluble with alcohol, water and so on. And we're going to use a specific cleaner for acrylics, this atomizer cleaner, to clean them. They can be applied with a brush, but this time we're going to apply them with an airbrush. Alright, now we have everything ready and we're going to apply the brick paint, for which we'll use these two colors, white and red. We're going to mix them together. Once we're done with the airbrush and the paint is more or less dry, get a couple of brushes that you have lying around, make sure they're stiff, worn out, or you can get another kind of sharp tool, and we're going to moisten the paint and make it come off. We wet it with some water and see how easily the paint is coming off? That's because the paint is acrylic. It would be more difficult with other types of paint. So that's the idea. We're going to create this kind of wear and tear on the paint. See? When the liquid gets wet, the paint chips off, exposing what's underneath. Alright, as you can see, we've removed the tape, we've painted the cable, 
in these pieces that are going to have a rusty metal finish. We've made the base color white, so that we can work either with orange acrylics or oils later on. What we're going to do now is, just like we did with the surface, we're going to work on the window and the window frame. Since we're going to create chipped effects here as well, we first apply a base. For the wood, I'm going to apply a very diluted base of light ochre tones. And I'll add shadows with a dark color. So let's start working on it, with a very diluted paint. Now we're going to paint the wooden base of the door and then we'll apply the chipping fluids. We'll apply this dark grey to the entrance door and the light beige to the rest. As in the previous cases, we'll apply them very diluted. What I'm doing right now is to use a very diluted dark grey or black paint to apply a sort of wash on the wood. I apply it to the edges and ends of the slats and then spread it with water. You don't need to worry about leaving any stains here because of the wood's texture. Let's now take a look at how to apply the chipping fluid with the brush. We'll apply a couple of layers to make sure we cover the surface completely. We'll wait for it to dry and then apply a second coat to ensure that the surface is covered well. Since I'm going to apply the paint with a sponge, I've protected the surrounding areas because the sponge doesn't give us as much control as the brush. I get some undiluted paint with a sponge and start applying it. See how with the help of a toothpick or a stiff or regular brush, I'm applying water and rubbing with the brush to remove the paint from where I want to. The effect of the chipping fluid makes it to come off and take the layer of paint that's on top with it. I've painted all the ironwork on the facade in dark brown. As you can see, we still need to finish the plates and other parts. But for the ironwork and the rusty metal areas, I'm using orange tones. Later, I'll paint the door plates. And with that, we can consider the acrylic painting phase finished. Alright, so we've decided that it's best to put the posters on before we start weathering. So we'll need a cutter and a metal ruler. And since some of them need touch-ups, we'll also use scissors and we'll cut them out and see how to glue them. To glue the posters, I'm going to use PVA white glue that I'll apply on a piece of cardboard so that I can dilute it a little. We'll dilute it with a bit of water so that we can apply it with a brush more easily and get better results. Just apply it to the area where you'll put the poster. We can use a toothpick to create some imperfections. Let's now start with the weathering. We'll start by applying a wash in some specific areas, all the grooves, recesses. We'll use the enamel included in the set, streaking grime, and dilute it with a bit of white spirit. You can adjust the dilution as you go, adding more thinner as you're using it up, depending on how much you want it to stain. 
Here we go. What's the way to apply it? We use it in cracks, grooves. We can also use it to imply certain shadows. I only apply it to the edges, recesses. See how it naturally flows through all the grooves and accentuates all the details. In some areas, we can also use it for shading. For example here, the wood grain will be emphasized, saving us some work later on. I've been applying the shading and to show you the result, more or less, I've applied it in this area, which I haven't blended yet. So now, as you can see, I apply it in the areas where I want to create shade and then simply blend the product with a brush dipped in thinner. The next step is to outline all the bricks and create cracks. How can we do that? Well, we're doing it with a fairly diluted mixture of an off-white tone and using a very fine brush. The idea is to outline the cracks at the top and the bottom and create new ones. Before we get ready for the oil paints, the rust effects and so on, what we've done is finish all the grooves, we've outlined them with white color and now we're going over these panels where we'll use rust tone oil paints later on. Let's finish this one. I'm just adding some dark color chipping in the perimeter area to recreate rusted metal. Now we're going to start the treatment with some additional products. The oil paints. They're very easy to work with because you simply apply them and then blend and distribute them with white spirit. To use them, we'll put them on a piece of cardboard that will absorb some of the oil and we can mix them with the enamels because they work very well together. In fact, their properties change a bit when mixed. The enamel is harder, the oil paint is softer, and when mixed, you get an interesting mixture. At first, we'll use a combination of dark enamel and oil paint to enhance the shadows. And then we'll start working on the rust effects. I have the white spirit here. And I always put a piece of a paper towel underneath, so that I can dry the brush as I work. So now we are going to make the enamel much darker and start working. Then I'll blend it with the thinner. Even if it seems like it will be too evident afterwards, you'll see how the oil paints become more subdued. We can start incorporating some other colors now. As you can see, I've already started with the rust effects. So we're going to apply them to this area where we have the posters so that you can see how it will look. I'm mixing the dark color with red and adding a touch of orange. And I'll use White Spirit, applying it with a light sweeping movement. Finally, we've reached the final phase. In this phase, we're going to simulate a kind of moss on the lower parts using a mixture of acrylic green colors. Keep in mind that they're acrylic so we need to be careful with any potential smudging or stains. And with that, we're finishing our facade. 
Thank you very much for watching, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.